welcome to this video on stable diffusion when we open the web user interface then it starts in this top called text to image and there are quite a lot of parameters to tinker with so let's have a look what we can do with all these parameters before we start to do anything I would like to take away a couple of tick marks in the settings uh, and they are here in the uh, saving of images uh, by default always save generated images is on and I put it off and also the uh, the generated grids I put that off why well if they are on everything you do all, all your uh, experiments they will be saved on your disk and well I don't need that I can click the save button uh, let's apply these settings and uh, over here you have a save button so if you see a picture that you like then press save and you have the same but not every individual picture will be on your disk at the very top we have the stable diffusion checkpoint or model selector this arrow uh, gives a drop down and uh, currently i only have one model that's the model that we downloaded in the previous video during the install fully automatic so i don't have uh, much choice i select that model more models can be found and downloaded for free from the internet and that will be the subject of a future video the first field we come across in the text to image tab is this prompt field that's where we type the text of the image we like to create let me type the text a woman and then i can click generate and in a couple of seconds I have an image of a woman and I can click it and even click it again to watch it uh, in, in a larger window and well it's a nice black and white pencil drawing but it's actually not what I was hoping for I was hoping for a photo of a woman um, there are two ways to do that I could add the text a photo of a woman oh that's double a and generate it again and hope that i get a photo well uh, that's true but i got a black and white photo i like a color photo well there is a another option we can add here a color photo or we can also add a negative prompt and well just to be sure let me add gray scale over here i don't want gray scale and i also don't want a drawing and also not a painting so now when i generate a image i should get a color photo of a woman let's see well that's working yeah is this a photo well no well yeah it probably is a photo a very old one and i did not mean the woman i meant the style of the photo um let's add a bit more detail then uh, i like a woman age 30 with brown hair it's all in the details uh, you have to specify what you like to see otherwise the uh, artificial intelligence takes a lot of freedom so let's generate again and see what we get well this is starting to look uh, still a little bit old-fashioned but uh, it's uh, it's starting to look the way i like to go but why would i generate uh, one picture at the time over here we have the batch count and let me slide that to eight and then see what happens uh, well we can see here at the right the progress bar and it is now generating eight different pictures all 
photos, color photos of a woman around the age of 30 with brown hair. It seems to have worked. Um, well, let's let's have a look at one of these. Um, uh, yeah, this looks like a nice one to go on with, or this one maybe. So you now have a bit of a choice of the image that you would like to work further with. By the way, you might ask why did I change the batch count and not the batch size? Well, it's a subtle difference. Uh, uh, a stable diffusion works in batches, so every time that I click generate, it starts to create in a batch the amount of images that I specified in the batch size. I use only one image because I have limited VRAM on my NVIDIA card and we can see over here at the bottom that generating one image already took 5 gigabytes out of the 8 that I have. If I would increase the batch size uh, Already with two images, I would exceed the number of VRAM that I have available. So this only works nice uh, to have more images um, generated inside one batch. It can go faster, but you need a decent amount of VRAM and I don't have that. And we can see over here in this window that generating eight images uh, with this uh, size of 512 pixels that took only 15 seconds so it's okay with me. What we see by the way is that Stable Diffusion generates all kinds of different images well they adhere quite well to the text that we entered but they are all different. How is that uh, done? Well that's the process of the artificial intelligence Stable diffusion starts with noise and then via a sampler it starts to work its way up in steps and we can specify the number of steps that we want and then it works towards the image of the text that we gave it. This is a simulation of the process, so we are doing 18 steps and we can see every single step. It is working its way towards the text that we gave, which in this case probably is a dog in Paris. The noise we start with is generated by a noise generator and that has a seed number and with that seed number at minus one where it is now uh, it always is different. But uh, we can have a look at one of these pictures. Let's say we like to have this picture and we can have a look over here at the bottom. It says this picture was generated with a specific seed number and we can copy that seed number very quickly yeah you could use copy paste but this button over here puts the number of the image that we have in view here in the seed and look what happens now if I would change the batch count back to one and I would generate uh, one image based on this seed then I get exactly this same image. Isn't that nice? Yes, that is nice because now if I want to I can make smaller variations of this very image and one of the ways to do that is, oh wait I, I lost my seed number, one way to do that is to click this extra tick mark that opens a few new parameters. I now also have a variation seed and I can with this slider change the variation strength and let's put it on not too high a number a small number gives me variations of this image but not too wild let's create eight new images using this and see what happens and we can see already in the preview that well it stays close to the original image the background is the same and the length and the curls in the hair even the hand that is there uh, often uh, pops up 
and uh, well I can now have a new look at these new images which all are small variations of the image that we already had and maybe there is one that we like even better in case we would like to have a, a, a bit more stronger variation well we just up the slider a bit and uh, take it to 0.5 and let's generate again and now the uh, image creator takes a little bit more creative freedom it adds more random noise and we can already see that now also the background is changing and the well the posture is changing and well we we have more variation now but still it stays a little bit the same with the length of the hair and so on uh, something to play with once you have an image that you like create 20 variations why not and maybe there's one that you like even better Another way to create variations is the CFG skill, which stands for the Classifier Free Guidance skill. How strong the image should confirm to the prompt. Lower values produce more creative results. Well, because we already gave it a seed and this text i don't think if we change it to a lower value that we will get something completely different but let's try it out it should at least be a variation of this image it is but it's also a little bit more fuzzy not as sharp uh, with computer art that may work fine but for realistic photos values around 6 to 11 seem to work best uh, well this definitely is another picture let's do one more let's go to 15 and see what it does and then we go to the end of the scale and then we will see yeah the, this is a completely different picture all of a sudden and it starts to look a bit more cartoon like not a realistic photo anymore 6 to 11 those are the values for realistic stuff 30 which is the maximum let's see what it does and this is well not a photo at all it starts to be really computer art cartoon like and maybe for other stuff like drawings and paintings and what have you it can be fun to experiment with but not for photo realistic images so let's go back to 7 and then there's yet another way to create variations and that is the sampling method and the sampling steps however there will be a separate video on that there are so many samplers and they all do a little bit different things and they all depend a little bit on how many steps you take let's go to 20 uh, to 30 steps just for one uh, experiment and see that we get another variation of this uh, seed number uh, but there are so many samplers that will be a separate video otherwise we will drown um, but there's one important factor let's go back to our original image first Below the sampler we see a tick, possible tick for a restore faces and that is a nice one to use with photorealistic stuff because it does what it says, it restores faces. I made an example, let's have a look. This is an image I generated on a scale of 768 times 512 but it is now stretched out completely on my 4K monitor. Uh, this is the image created without restore faces and now look at the eyes and the mouth when we would create it with restore faces that is a great improvement here in the eyes let me switch back and forth this is without and this is with restore much better eyes also look at our mouth uh, here the, the the teeth are not very realistic but right now they suddenly are she also gets a little uh, earring that was not there before and also if you would look at the hair it starts to look a little bit more natural and also the skin look this is quite smooth almost 
uh, photoshopped for a uh, magazine, but this is a more realistic skin. So there are several things that this Restore Faces does for you, fully automatic, isn't that wonderful? There also is a tiling option and a high resolution fix and that is for a future video. Uh, however, there's one thing left that we have not yet covered, that is the width and the height of the picture. And it is by default on 512 and there is a good reason for that. The whole model is trained on images of 512. So if we would change it over here, uh, then uh, you may run into trouble, but well, we can allow ourselves a little bit freedom. I often use 768 because then I get a 2 to 3 scale. Uh, we use this seat, but we will see now that we will get a different girl because we get different noise pattern. The whole size of the image has changed. So we get a completely different picture now, but it now has this 2 to 3 ratio. Uh, if you uh, t uh, try it out on larger numbers, let's say 1 to 1024, I, I have not tried it before, but you often get, suddenly you get li things like this, two girls which you, yeah, they are nice twins, but it was not what we wanted. In many cases, uh, to stay around 512 or maybe this uh, 768, the 2, 3 ratio uh, gives the best results. And then we can use the high resolution fix, the upscalers, uh, uh, and also uh, upscalers as a post-processing. Uh, we can use those to create high resolution images. Mm, well, I think we covered the entire user interface besides the five icons over here and the style icon. Uh, those will be the subject of a future video. Maybe see you back there and in the meantime, have fun.